Today, we're going to be highlighting the top category or the top N categories with a new and more dynamic technique that also happens to be easier than the older method. So I'm going to go through how to do this step by step with a bar chart today, but I want to point out that it also works with almost all of the core visuals. I picked this trick up from a post by Eric Svensson on LinkedIn. I'm going to link his profile in the video description. He's been posting a ton of stuff on visual calculations lately, which is what we're using here. So follow him if you are looking for more ideas on how to use this feature. But we're going to take what he does about three steps further here, and we're going to draw the rest of the owl, if you know what I mean. Let's get started. We're going to move to a new tab and I'm going to use a stack bar chart today, but you can use whatever you like. I'm going to drop my measure for sales in here. And this will work with both field parameters and any normal dimensions. So I could do our product flavor, or I can use a field parameter and drop our field parameter in here. This video isn't about field parameters specifically, so I'm not going to go too in depth on how to set field parameters up, but I want to point out that it works with them because it's cool. I'll drop our slicer on the page for field parameter values. And I'm going to set it to single select because you can't have more than one axis value here. We're going to use visual calculations to do this, both because it's easier and it's more dynamic. And to do that, either select your visual and go to the new visual calculation menu in the home tab of the toolbar, or just go to the ellipses menu next to your visual, and then go to new visual calculation and choose custom. I'm going to go through how to do this two ways, highlighting just the top row and highlighting the top however many rows you want. So top three, top six, whatever. The formulas for them are different. So I'm going to start with just the top bar. We're going to add a new calculation on here. I'm going to call it color. And that's going to be equal to an if statement. So if our sales measure that's in our visual is equal to max x, so not max, max x, max x is an iterator, and then put in rows here. So rows is a feature of visual calculations, means the rows that are in the visual, and then a comma, and our measure that's in our visual, so minus sales, and close the parentheses, then do a comma. So, so far, what this is doing is checking to see if the row is the top row for that particular measure. And if it is, it's going to return a particular color value. Otherwise, it's gonna use whatever your default color is. Now we get to choose our colors. So Eric pointed out in his post that you can actually use the good and bad sentiment colors from your theme here, just by using the words good or bad. So I could go like this and that'd pull directly from my theme. I'll show you where that is later, but you can also use a particular hex code. So I can do this one, which is a nice green and then close our parentheses. So we're not done yet. We have our color showing up in this table down here. What we need to do now is we need to tell Power BI what data type this is. So it likes to default to thinking it's a decimal. So if we go to this format your visual icon here and then go to the general tab under data format, we can select our color field and then change it to text because it's a text type field. If you don't do this step, it won't let you select it when you are doing the conditional formatting. We have one more thing we need to do here. If we go back to our visuals tab up top under bars, you'll notice that there's no conditional formatting setting right now. That's because we need to move this calculation that got created out of the axis bucket. With Power BI, when you have multiple things in this bucket, it only lets you color things by the legend and manually picking the values. So I'm going to put mine in tooltips. I'm just going to use the context menu and say move to tooltips. So now when we go back to the format your visual pane under bars, we have a new option called categories. So categories is what lets this whole process be dynamic. So it's going to color based on whatever category happens to be selected. So that's what makes this work with field parameters. And we also now have this FX option here. So we're going to click that and then go and change it to field value and then select our color column. So if you didn't change the color to a text type, it won't show up here. So now you can see our top category is formatted to our color. I'm going to go back to report. And if you were wondering where the color theme options were for the good and bad. That's under the view tab in the ribbon themes. And then at the bottom, customize the current theme. So if you use good and bad for positive and negative as the thing that your measure is returning, it'll use these colors. I tested it, it did work. We can use this on multiple visual types. So I can change this to an upright bar chart. I can change it to a funnel. It'll work with the ribbon and the line charts and area charts too. Just use a date field and axis on that. So now let's go over how to do this with the top end. So to highlight, say the top three or five or whatever bars, I'm going to swap this back to this visual type. So I'm going to go down here to my calculation and edit it. And when you're done setting this up, you probably want to hide it. There's a little eyeball icon here, so that'll hide it from the tooltip so people can't see it. 
So we want to use a different formula for top n. We're going to set up a variable first just because it makes the code more user friendly to read. So we're going to do var in the space. What we're going to do here is evaluate the rank for our categories. Rank is a reserved word in Power BI, so you can't call it rank. So I'm just going to call it rank without an a. We're going to set this equal to rank x on our rows for our sales measure. We can leave value blank. So I'm just going to double comma it and then we're going to sort it descending. I'm going to close this. For a return, we're going to say if rank variable, oops, without an A, is less than or equal to the number of things we want to highlight. So if I wanted to highlight the top three bars, I would put a three here and then do a comma and then put in our color. So you can do good, bad, neutral, or our Xcode with a pound sign and then close our parentheses. Commit that. And you can see that now the top three bars are colored. So it remembered that the data type was text because we're using the same object we created earlier and we already set that. If you're creating this from scratch, you'll need to set the data type there. So then we can go back to our report and double check that it's working with our parameters and it is, so that's great. So that's everything I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.